regular viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. It's another brake job video. Imagine that. 2005 Ford Ranger with a flame job. This little fella is getting the entire kit and caboodle. The whole ball of wax. The whole enchilada, if you will. These calipers are rusty, crusty, nasty, and original. <laughs> that is not that size anymore. Time to start going down. I think they're supposed to be 15. That was a 14. The only thing smaller than 14 is a 13. You gotta not be in love with your sockets if you work around here. There we go. 13 it is. Hopefully it comes with a new one. I'm gonna switch back to our 14 so it doesn't get stuck. So we're just gonna take. Oh, easy fella. Get the brake hose off. We will save the banjo bolt just in case. Our calipers typically come with new ones. Oh, let's go get our valve stem. Free tip from a viewer. Probably should take the cap off. I want that has a tendency to want to be stuck in there. Well, that one's pretty snug. Way more snug than the other one we did. So that stops the uh Drippage, as you guys have probably seen in the most recent video on the Hondu, we'll stick that out of the way. I think I've got the right sides here. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna use the big dog. <laughs> Time to break out Ginger. There's Ginger. I don't need that size anymore, fella. Get him, Ginger! Get him! No, oh, that's about to change sizes too. Oh, I hate rust. We started with 15. Next size smaller than 15 is 9 16 So we'll beat that on there. We'll do it by hand. They'll probably break. I really don't care if they do because they go into the caliper bracket. It's a matter, little guy, you don't fit in there anymore. There you go. Oh, that feels soft. Oh, that thing like came right loose like nobody's business. Why was Ginger struggling so? Maybe she cracked it loose on me. How I hate you. Ah, but it makes you so much money, you know? Ah, that's not going on straight. Let's try to get a real hammer. I'll feel like a little Woody the Woodpecker. Get a hammer. Ah, I'm left hand swinging too. I am not making out well. I'm not good with this whole left hand and stuff. Ah, let's see. I wish I had like a 14.5 millimeter. Slip off. I know. Ah, freaking sockets. There we go. That'll teach you. Yes, 
she just gonna slip off there. I gotta come up with a different plan. Maybe a 12 point. I feel that's how the whole video is gonna go. Okay. 12 points where it's at. I just don't have to come out or break off one or the other. Let's see. Oh, hey, tight little guy. <laughs> we win. Us one Ford Ranger zero so far. Well, there's all they are. Nothing fancy. I guess I gotta get my socket back, don't I? That war is over. Or is it just beginning? Let's get that rusty mess off here. Dump the fluid out of it. Let's send these back for cores. <laughs> All right, that's good enough. The old pads are nuked on this baby. Pretty much like everything else we take off. The inside pad is pretty well hammered. Inside these rotors, let me set this down. I think we're looking pretty rough. I don't know, one, one side or the other was. Let's see. Looks like a fairly new wheel bearing for that rotor not just falling off. and there won't be anything left. That rotor is, or that wheel bearing is not that old. Would you really have put that back on, that new wheel bearing? I don't know how old that thing is, but it ain't very old. Backing plates are pretty well shot. We'll ditch them. No sense in leaving them on. That would be silly, but you can see New York State taking another victim and then it would be completely ridiculous to leave that on there. Uh, wheel speed sensor is still attached well so we don't have to worry about that. Now some cars that backing plate is there and you know not only to keep the you know crap off the back of the rotor but uh, keeps the wheel speed sensor in place like some of the S10s and stuff like that. All right well Got to strip off the other side. The other side has a new bearing also. Kind of surprised because I really had to wail that rotor over there. Way more than I did one on this side. Well, let me show it to you. I can't believe somebody put these rotors on relatively new bearings, so that's the rotor off the driver's side. Punky. It can't be that old. I don't know, they're the Korean. They're moved, but they're the Korean ones. They haven't made them in Korea in about a year, I think. They're all China now. Viewer asked me the other day in the Hondu video which discs I use. I, I believe it's called Doka. I don't have the package here anymore. I'll put a link in the description. It's actually, the company actually sent me these. I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know, two inch discs. Because I usually buy, uh, not 3M anymore, um, Norton, Norton discs. They seem to hold up quite well. These are relatively inexpensive, come in a 30 pack. And I believe it's a 30 pack, yeah, because you get 10 medium, 10 coarse, 10 fine. I'm out of all the coarse. I actually got to order some more, but I'll put a link in the description. I've used them a lot. I've got a pack over here, pack over there, pack on the other side, almost gone. But they hold up extremely well. I'm kind of surprised because I think they were like 17 or 18 bucks or something like that for a 30 pack. <laughs> Thank you. 
personally, I like to go through, tear everything apart, get everything cleaned up. That way when the new stuff shows up, you can just, you know, flop it together. I'm gonna get the mounting brackets here where the caliper bracket goes, make sure they're cleaned up. And then also, <laughs> it's not really that bad. I want to clean up the brake hose. I gotta see if I can get my. Oh man, made a, made a mistake. Get out of there. I want to clean up the hose. Now a lot of people are gonna be like, why didn't you put new hoses on it, new lines, and new everything? It's not my truck. I need to get some gritty ones. Here we go. Get some 36 gritters. These will get the job done. What's up, Mrs. O? Show me or something. Mm. This can of brake clean I opened is like insanely pressurized. I, it's a, I have a fresh case. So I'm hoping the whole case is like this. Let me watch. <laughs> it's intense. <laughs> it is too. Kind of liking it. So we just cleaned it up where the, you know, around it and where the washers go. You see that tip, tip right there? This is though. Boom. Put the, put the bells in You're not. What's? You're not. Wait, I'm waiting to figure out. I don't understand. It makes the fluid stop dripping. Oh, then. Alright. Jeez. I thought you knew about did that. Somebody tell you about that? Yeah, a viewer did. Yeah, that's nice. I don't remember his name or I'd give him credit. Actually, a couple of viewers mentioned. I can't remember everybody's name. Oh, let's see where are we at. The front is tore apart. Now we got to get the rear tore apart. Pretty standard brake system here. I know you guys have asked for your rear brake drum video. I don't know the obsession with it. Um, I probably should have done the rear brake job video, you know, by itself, but we're just going to throw her in here. You get a little too fur. I'll just show you one side. They're pretty much all the same. You know what I mean? On these little rangers anyways uh you know they got the little adjuster cables you'll see these like on ford brakes and chryslers um several several companies use that style adjuster spring or adjuster cable rather uh, i know a lot of people are very familiar with the different brake manufacturers you know oh that's a you know Heldex, that's a delco that's a you know, whoever, I'm just like, oh, they're rear brakes, you know. Get stuff down. If you're not familiar with how to do your back brakes, the old uh, adage is, you know, just do one side at a time. And I've, uh, you know, often said like, yeah, that's, that's okay if the rear brakes have never been done before. Now, if somebody's done them and they did them wrong, well, guess what? You're just going to put them together wrong if you're copying them. Your best bet is to you know, get a service manual and follow that procedure. Now when I was checking these originally, these adjusters were pretty seized up. I grabbed them with a pair of pliers and got them moving. I see they're, they, they don't look too old. So we'll see, Let's see if we can salvage them. We're gonna have to take the parking brake cable off this side. Let me get the uh, little adjuster arm here off the bottom. Always save your springs because, you know, even if you get a spring hardware kit, they don't always come with some of the springs that only come in the adjuster hardware kit. Especially 
this one, one of the hardest to obtain springs is one that goes on the equalizer bar here that runs, you know, from shoe to shoe. A lot of times these springs are, you know, OEM only. Sometimes you can get them aftermarket. It depends. Now I would have you over here where you could actually see what I'm doing, but unfortunately to do this, I have to kind of stand in the way. So maybe once we put it together, I can move the camera, get you a little better angle as to what's going on. Get this little horseshoe clip off here. I don't know what they're technically called. What would you call this, Mrs. O? I always call them little horseshoe looking clip things. If you just called it a horseshoe clip, I think you would sound like you knew what you were talking about. Yeah, well, I don't, but to me, like if a horse, a miniature horse, had a miniature horse <laughs> that had a miniature horse, that could be its little horseshoe. Uh -huh. Don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. Or a, You could hear that clipping and a clopping. Or you could call it a tooth clip. Yeah. It kind of looks like the shape of a tooth. <clears throat> There's no tooth. <laughs> if you were like the Tin Man, or... C clip or U clip. Right. Depends on how you hold it. Hmm. Right? Yep. Go with whatever one you like. Yeah, whatever. Whatever you want to call it. Somebody in the comment box is going to be like, that's not a horseshoe clip. That's a ding dong or whatever. They'll feel an appropriate <laughs> name. You know what I mean? I'm sure somebody knows. Somebody always knows. I'm surprised you don't know. I don't know. Why would I know? You know a lot of I'm just a schmuck mechanic. Oh, please. Make you sure that your wheel cylinder is good. And then I'm going to pull out these little fellas here. What are those We're fellas clean called? The brake wheel cylinder shoe pushers. <laughs> I don't want to ask any technical questions. I know primary shoe, secondary shoe. Oh, that's good. Equalizer bar, park and brake, wheel cylinder. Well, if you had shaft. to order those parts, would it come with something? Yeah, you order them as a kid. Nobody cares. That's better. So I'm gonna keep down some of the dust. We'll just wet her down. You can use the garden hose too, but I don't have one over here, oddly enough. went ahead and wire wheeled up some of the components we're going to reuse like the, uh, the equalizer bar that goes across the little wheel cylinder actuators and then I got the adjuster freed up like I say it doesn't look that old so we're going to take a never sneeze of course we're going to have to save the adjuster cable okay so this does have a little bit of never sneeze down inside of it oddly enough somebody did put some in it but nowhere is near enough that's right Never sneeze is getting a little clumpy. See if we can't bring it back to life a little. I don't have any WD here. That usually works pretty good. Let me use a screwdriver. Give it a stir. It usually starts to soften it. I can probably see what its carrier is. I don't know what it uses for a base product. 
could dilute it with that, but it starts to get clumpy after a while. Instead of opening a new can, usually a little bit of WD, stir it up good, and it re-softens your never sneeze. And then you got and go use somebody else's screwdriver if you can, and then put it right back in their drawer. <laughs> no, seriously, don't do that. People get hurt doing stuff like that. I'll take this rag outside and burn it. We'll get it as far away as possible. There we go. That's a little softer. So I want to take and get these never seized up. So hopefully this little sucker doesn't seize up again. And oftentimes people forget to do this end. Or they put just a tab on the end of the threads and assume that, you know, spinning it in makes it all the way to the end. But it's very important that this moves very freely, otherwise the auto adjuster will not work. sure that's coated very well. Yeah, that should work good for us. Now all the contacts that we cleaned up, we are going to put a little never sees on them. Because this is kind of like your caliper slides in the front, you know, this is where the brake pads sit, the little webbing on the brake shoes rather. And we don't want that contact to get rusty. And you know, that way there it slides easily. And we'll also lubricate the parking brake adjuster arm. That way that doesn't seize up in the rear shoe. I did pull on the cables, they actually work, believe it or not. You know what else we should do while we're right here is up on the pivot we're going to lubricate around there now the brake shoes actually sit back on there further I had to go change my gloves because at this point you want to try to keep the schmoo off from the shoe <laughs> keep the schmoo off the shoe you can see we have a big shoe little shoe or long shoe short shoe See the difference there and this particular vehicle the big shoe goes to the back first thing we're going to do is put our parking brake actuator arm back in there sometimes the remanufactured brake shoes you might have to run a drill bit through it to clean up you know where they stamp through the webbing or if there's a bunch of paint and whatnot in there let me see this one is going all the way through and sometimes they actually have a wavy washer that goes on there also let me get my new uh, horseshoe container we're gonna call it we don't know the technical name for them the horseshoe we'll stick that on there I like so hopefully it's really difficult to do this around the camera I'm kind of surprised Usually the camera doesn't get in my way too much. I'll tell you what, I gotta move it because this is awkward. Hey, now you can see. So line it up on there. A lot of times I'll just give them a little push with those. And get it to get it over where we can work on it. And we'll give it a squeeze. They're not real technical, they just give them a squeeze that keeps them from coming off. And then that moves nice and free, as you can see. We will take a nail. Make sure they're the same size as your old nails. Or at least the size for the vehicle. I hate comparing stuff to the old stuff if I know it's not original. Which these rear brakes are not. And we're going to take a spring and a cup. A spring and a cup. And then... Man, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to make a mistake. Our wheel cylinder actuators here. I'm gonna put a dab and never seize on the ends of these. And so I put a little on the end, and then I put a little bit where it's gonna come in contact with the shoe. 
I'm gonna reinsert them into the wheel cylinder. I'm gonna end up getting never seize on something here. I got quite a bit on that little fella. We'll stick them back in. Get a rag. I'd like to try to keep my brake shoes clean that way we don't have because if you have to hose it with the brake clean when you're done, you know, then all the all your never sneeze disappears on you. Or it makes a mess. It just makes a freaking mess. We'll try to be a little bit clean about it. We'll line that up and then we're gonna have to stick. Could have been done with this an hour ago. Get our nail sticking through our shoe and then we will line up the actuator. I don't know the name for it. A little rod that sticks out of the wheel cylinder that actuates the brakes. Make sure that goes onto the brake shoe. I'm gonna bring it around. See what I'm saying? See how it goes up in there? Okay. So once that little guy's in there, keep you guys over here, we'll stick our spring on. Usually the nail will hold it in place and then you got to use, you know, your little cup pliers. I don't know the technical, I don't know the technical name for anything. You know, it's going to hold it for us and then we'll get it lined up, put it on a quarter turn and it holds it. I'm probably the worst fellow you can get for explaining this job. A lot of people are intimidated by brake shoes, which I don't understand. I don't know. I've been doing them for a long time. They're all a little different, but they're all kind of the same. You just got to learn the moves. Lots of reach arounds, finger holds, all kinds of stuff. We'll get that shoe up there where it belongs. I'll stick this little piece up here. And then do not forget where they're spraying. Let me get our hardware over here. Oh, we'll get all this stuff. Now it's funny, I mentioned in the video that, you know, don't lose this spring because it usually doesn't come with a kit. Well, I lied. This kit, it does. So that's good. And here is the spring for our adjuster arm. we stick that on down at the bottom. And then, where's our little arm at? Here's a little arm. Now these are specific left to right. They're keyweighed right there. So we will keyway that little guy on. You guys can't see crap. This video sucks. And then, so we'll keyway that on. And then bring the spring up and around it. That's gonna get my gloves. And then latch it. It'll all, it'll all come together good in the end, trust me. So if stuff pops apart on you, don't get, don't get frustrated. Get even. How to do, do, where am I? What do we want now? We want the equalizer bar. Make sure this goes in in the correct orientation. In this case, it's gonna be like so. We'll slip that in before we forget it that in. Let that line up on the other side and we'll just kind of compress our wheel cylinder. It's going to want to push back apart but just so we know it's all good. This is a little cable guide that's going to go in the rear here. That's actually going to go behind the equalizer bar in there a little bit. A lot of times nothing holds these on except for just the spring when you're all done, making a mess out of this. And then make sure that you put your cable on before you put your first spring on. We ain't gonna hook it up, we're just gonna drape it around where it needs to go. Let it sit there. And this side takes the long spring and that's gonna go right through the guide hole. Now sometimes when you go to put this spring on, the little guide pops out. And you can't have that happening. You have to take your spring back off. This is so weird doing this out of place. I need to get a spring tool. You'll know if it's not right. At least you should. And we'll put, our, put this spring on. So that spring is on. It appears our cable guide stayed in place. Everything's 
good there. Then we will take our short spring and we'll run this side. I like the puzzler. No, I'm not the puzzler, man. <clears throat> I'm the struggler. Give me a give me a flat screw, right? Come on, chip, chop, chip. There you go. I mean, you hold it like things got herpes or something. You got me on Push that spring in all the way. I feel like I'm missing something here, fella. Put this spring in. Boom! Nobody got hit in the face. That's good. Bonus. Bonus. And then we're going to hook our spring up down on our actuator arm. I say actuator. I basically have deemed everything the actuator. <laughs> your lower actuator, your upper actuator. So that little fella's on. We have one more spring that comes across the bottom. Now this one, in our case, is going to go in this direction. So you have to loop it through. Now I can't loop it back out to show you because they're kind of tricky. I should have done this before I did the cable. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> have you done this before? I haven't. Uh, vice grip pliers. Good job, Mrs. L. You're basically a junior technician now. Yep. They do make spring pulling pliers. I have some. I don't really like using them. You don't like using them? I don't. I okay. still own them though. And I won't get rid of them. Because in some instances they work good. In this instance they don't. Now make sure this goes in, in the right direction. The side that extends, in this case, the side here, is going to face forward. And these are directional too. And our adjuster when it actuates, it's going to click, 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 like this. So you want it, so when the adjuster turns, click, 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 it grows. You know what I mean? Hopefully. And then I save that for last. Kind of bring it around town. Click it on the one shoe. Give it the old spreader and line it up. And then you're done. Give them a little pat, a little shake. Couple of clicks, call it a day. I just wanted to get some of my bigger gobs of never seize off. I think that was pretty well it. Make sure there's nothing on the face of the linings, which these ones are clean. We did a good job not getting smooge all over them. If you did, some you know, just be cautious with the brake clean. Yeah, sometimes I'll take a little scuffy, you know, piece of emery cloth and go through and you know scuff up the friction material and a little bit of brake clean but if you come back here and you give it the full douche you know all the never sees you put on it is gone at that point it's all washed away so so that's it that's my feeble attempt at a rear brake video for you side is this here. This is the driver's side, the passenger side. This is the passenger side. So this is up here. I just want to make sure I get the right cord, right box. Driver's side. So we'll stick the left side on the left, right side on the right. That way we don't screw them up when we send back the cores. I don't know if it really matters to them. Check. Let's make sure we have two different ones. We do. We have a left and the right. Oh, failed on the first try. Get out the little plug. Sometimes these things can be a mother lover to get out. Especially if you use a razor sharp knife. They can really be stuck in there. The blue one's pretty good. The red one is shoved right down in there. Come on. Come on, you little piss pot. This thing is just pissing me off. Yeah, we won. Oh, these are 14. Nope. 
Wrong guess, fella. Man, I'm sucking at life today. It's not square either. Jeez. Alright, well, assemble one. You guys have seen this process. You gotta let me know when you get sick of brake videos. Because I can bring you brake videos every day. Multiple times a day. Brakes and wheel bearings and tires. So my... It's got to get monotonous at some point. It is for me. After the many years of doing them. And I don't hate it. Don't get me wrong. Otherwise I wouldn't do this job. But after doing literally thousands and thousands of brake jobs you just like I don't know it's probably why I'm not the best teacher explainer because a lot of it just becomes muscle memory after a while if that's the correct word repetition if you will especially with the rear brakes I mean we could go into a whole segment on rear brakes and how they work in different styles and Depends on where the pivot is, where the adjuster is, but frankly, we just don't see rear drums. You know, we like like we used to back when, you know, back when my grandma was young. Everything was drum brakes. But it is one of the most asked for videos next to the shop tour video. Shop tour, toolbox tour, whatever, whatever it is there. But let me know when you're sick of brake videos, seriously, because I'm just doing videos because you guys say you want videos and no videos are stupid, apparently, even though I think they are. So I'm just keep putting some of them together. I haven't had much Diag stuff in lately. I haven't even had many shops calling lately, which is unusual. And all winter long, it was pretty, pretty hardcore. Must be everything's fixed for the time being. Had a couple silly ones in lately that were just real quick, quick and easy. You know, alternator diagnosis and some evap leaks. And nothing. Now these are phenolic piston. Technically, we don't have to grease them, but phenolic, aka some sort of plasticky stuff. These things seize up all the time. They don't rust, which is kind of nice. But they're prone to seizures. I'm going to put new bolts in the caliper bracket. The ones on the other side had been replaced at some point throughout its life. And one of them, they're supposed to be like 12, 175 by 35 millimeters. Somebody had like a 45 over there and stacked up a bunch of washers. It just looks ridiculous. So we'll just put some new ones in it. Just to be just to keep them all the same. That way you don't need like four different wrenches to take the thing apart. Get out the a banjo bolt. Stick that in. Now just get the other one together. We'll get the rotors out of the package and slid up on there. Also, before we put the front calipers on and start to bleed them, we have to have the brake drums on. Now before you put the brake, or after you put the brake drums on, we have to adjust them and, you know, we're just going to use your classic brake spoon. And then you reach through from the back side, the hole in the back of the backing plate, and then when you turn it, you know, that's going to turn our adjuster. However, you're cranking and cranking, you're having fun, everybody's happy. You got the brakes too tight. Now what? Technically, unless you force it, you can't back it back off, you know, without taking the chance of damaging the arm. So that's where the long pick comes in. So you got to kind of get the feel for these. You reach through the backside. I like to use the pick that has, you know, that end on it, a little 45 and a 45 ish reach through and just push the adjuster arm away from the slack adjuster and you have to do that kind of blindly and then take and move your adjuster in the opposite direction so you have to push the adjuster arm away and then back it back off 
and then let it back go, and then you know give it another click. See what I'm saying? So we'll reach down through, push it away, and then at the same time, you know, shorten it back up. If that makes sense to you. So that's what we'll be doing when we install the drum because it's my habit. There's different ways of doing it. Some guys will take the brake shoes, set them inside the drum, up on the top here, right here, what you do is you get the, the diameter of this pivot, so the inner pivot where the shoes hit, you just get a socket the same size diameter, you stick the shoes inside the drum, you stick the socket on the pivot, you stick your adjuster in, and then you crank it out to the appropriate circumference, and then you mark your adjuster, Take, every, you know, take it back out of the drum, put it all back together, spin your adjuster out to where that mark is, and technically your brakes should be adjusted where they are. That's kind of an old school way of presetting them if they're a pain to get to. On these, what I like to do is just put the drum on, tighten up the adjuster till it you know, is fully compressed, you know, jerk the parking brake cable a couple times, back it off a few clicks till they're lightly scuffing the drum. Now these drums are actually in really good shape on the inside. So we're gonna reuse these drums. Getting aftermarket drums sucks because they all shake, unless you're buying OEM drums. Now this is a posi rear. There's a little bit of grit. These ones may actually be really close. There's a little bit of grit getting built up in the edge and it's hitting the backing plate slightly. So what we're going to do, it will be fine when we put the wheel on. You can do this after you put the wheel on. It's usually your best bet if they're not, you know, sitting on there good. So I'm going to reach through, tighten it up. I just want to make sure the shoes are going to come all the way out and kind of equalize. They're starting to get tight right now. They should be locked up and they are. Then, like I said, I'm going to reach back in there, push the adjuster arm away. And then we're going to back them back off a few clicks here. Everything should rotate, so our adjustment's going to be really close. And this truck is kind of hard to tell. And then they come with a rubber plug, we'll put the rubber plug in it. Did not have a minute when it came in. Now this truck has a posi rear, so it's kind of hard to tell because you're spinning both sides. Better do it the other way so I can see what the heck I'm doing, right? There is that. It's a good idea to double check the brake tension after a little test drive or after you drive it for a few days just to be sure and then periodically after that, auto tensioners, they work to a certain degree. Nobody uses their parking brake. So, No coated rotors today, folks.
see I did get us some new bolts. These are 12, 175 by 35 millimeters. We'll take our caliper assembly, stick it right up there. Now, if you're replacing the bolts that go through your caliper bracket, the length is pretty critical. You're probably better off just getting OEMs. You go a little too long, they will protrude through and hit the rotor. It can make some pretty horrendous noise. Like I said, on the other side, they had like a 40 millimeter long one, or 45 rather. And that sucker was sticking, well, it had a bunch of washers jacked up on it. And if, I don't know if they found that out the hard way or what. But. Whoa, almost sprayed the camera. Oh, that fits a little snug in this one. Oh, I'll pop myself right in the schnoz. Oh, I've never had that much problem with hose pinch pliers. We're ready to get this thing bled out. You in there, Mrs. O? Uh -huh. All right, turn your wheels to the left. That's good. Your foot's not on the brake, is it? Nope. All right, so I tried gravity bleeding these. And uh, I don't feel like waiting. All right, Mrs. O, are you ready? The first pump is going to go easy, so let me go about halfway for me, okay? Mm -hmm. Right down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Down. All right, we're in good shape on this side. You got up. We'll go do the other side real quick. All right, turn your wheel to the other left. Ah, that's good. Or, yeah, you're up, right? I am. Okay, down. Up. Okay, down. Up. Okay, start pumping them up. All right, is the pedal getting a little stiffer? Uh -huh. Okay, down. Down. Up. Down. All right, that's good. Now what we want to do now that the pistons are all the way out is I'm just going to go back and just double check the other side, make sure when the pistons come out it didn't jar a little air bubble loose at may have been hiding under one. Everything. I'm not I'm tired. I'm tired. You're always tired. Well. I'm tired. I'm tired of doing breaks. It's your job. I know it's my job. It's, what you do. it's like the 57th break job this month, week. 
Yeah. I know. But it's just starting to get draggy. That's probably another brake job. You better get you better get in there. Yeah. Go. Okay. Quick. I'm going. Go. I'm getting. Now all that is left is to put the wheels on. Take it for a little shimmy around town. Now one of my viewers commented that he takes liquid electrical tape and covers up his bleeders with it and he lived in the rust belt if I remember correctly and stated that that holds up extremely well. I've always given him a little douche inside now with some fluid film. But frankly they're lifetime warranty calipers so if something were to you know break on them or whatever just trade them in. All right, see you later, Miss Zoe. Bye. You ready to go for a ride, Trina? Yeah. All right. You're looking all thug over there in your seat with it laid back like that. <laughs> we gotta go see if the brakes work. You think they do? Mm, yeah. You better hope they do. Oh, I can't stop! Oh, just kidding. Just <laughs> kidding. What if he couldn't? If we couldn't stop, just crash into the ditch. Maybe take out a pole. <laughs> then they would all fall down. If you hit one pole, do you think they would all fall down? Yeah. Why is that? Because they're all connected. The wires? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think that happens. People hit poles all the time and it doesn't rip them all down. But that's good thinking though. I like the way you're thinking. Let you see that. I think the wires are pretty forgiving. This thing sounds pretty sweet with a loud cherry bomb on there, don't you think? Huh? Oh, it doesn't ride too smooth, does it? No. What's your favorite kind of car? Um, I don't know yet. If you had to pick a car right now, what would you get? Truck. <laughs> You'd get a truck? Like what kind? You get a Toyota? Oh yeah? How come? Uh, I don't know. Because they're awesome. Because they're awesome. Oh really? Because they're awesome? Uh, yeah, look at this. Couple hoodlums up here on their bicycles. <laughs> you know them boys? Nope. Wait, yeah. You do? Oh yeah, we know the one. Don't say his name because we can't say his two, name. Two actually. You knew two of them boys? I'm gonna have to go back and talk to him. Tell him to stay away from you. <laughs> what? Don't. Don't tell him that? No. Alright. So you still got your wiggly tooth? Yeah. Oh man. You tried to pull it out the other day on What's Up Wednesday, didn't you? Mm hmm. Didn't come out though, did it? No. Oh well. Well, Tooth Fairy's gonna have to hang on to her money, huh? Got no school all this week. So, so you've been at work, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been in school still right now. Oh, you went? It's five o'clock. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you know how to tell time. I do. Oh, all right. Especially on digital. Oh, especially on digital? Yeah, it's the easiest kind. They're the easiest kind? What's the other kind called? Um, I forgot. Is it? A monolog or an analog? Analog. Oh, okay. All right. They are teaching you something in that school, huh? Mm -hmm. What else are you learning? Um, how to tell, tell, no, no, um, I don't know. I know everything else. You know everything else? Yep. Yeah. The brakes feel pretty smooth, at least through town there. Get her up to cruising speed here. Smooth, ain't they, Trina? So sometimes running new shoes on old drums, they take a little while to break in. That's why I would advise you to go back through and double check the adjustment after, you know, 100 miles or so, just to be on the safe side.
feel pretty good. Nowhere as near as grabby as it was when I pulled it in. Before you just touch this brake pedal, the rear brakes will lock right up. Hear that? What do you think that is? Only when you're stepping on the gas. What do you, what do you think that would be? No, not the engine. What what changes? What what kind of bearing changes when you're? Because it sounds like a bearing to me. Sound like a bearing to you? Opinion bearing. Opinion bearing. Opinion bearing. That's what you think it is? Yeah, you're probably right. That would be my first guess. Boy, these four these four liters are pretty gutless, ain't they? Worse than this is the Ranger with a three liter. Those things you gotta run them to the floor all the time. that in mind for your truck when you're driving it around okay of course Toyotas really don't have pinion bearings that go bad wheel bearing rear wheel bearings in the Toyotas they, they go bad you probably do that right no no oh all right guys that's it putting brakes all the way around on your Ford Ranger 2005 questions comments criticisms concerns in the comment box down below and just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it thanks for watching